Okay. We are live on YouTube. Then we still telegram. Hello? Yeah. Please, I, I can't take calls now. I'm in the meeting, please. Thank you. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good to be here this morning. Hope we're all doing well. Oh, yes. All right, so we are looking at um, immortality part two today. Father, we thank you for yet another blessed day. We thank you for your Lord, we thank you for your grace and we thank you for the opening of the doors and the opening of the eyes and the enlightening of the hearts. Thank you for bringing us into yourself and bringing us into the revelation. Thank you for the grace to understand, the grace to learn, and the grace to explore the deep things that you have freely given unto us. We give you all praise, we give you all honor, we give you all adoration. Blessed are you, O God. Father, even as we explore today, we ask our Father that your name and your name alone be exalted in all things. Your name be glorified. Your name be lifted up on high. And that you will impress your word even as you guide us into depths in yourself, that we may come into the fullness of that which you have fully given unto us. 
that you have fully given unto us to enjoy in all things at this time. Thank you, Father. We give you all the praise and honor. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen and amen. Amen. All right. So um, we'll be looking at immortality part two, and um, we are looking at taking a deep look into the understanding of what resurrection is. You know, we've, we've been taught the resurrection and um, from how we were taught resurrection from the point of, um, well, I really don't, what I have learned to do is to speak with a great understanding of where our fathers were when they shared those things with us. So I'm not in any way blaming them, but it was the light that they had in their own time. It was with that light that they shared what they shared, the way they shared it with us. But fortunately, what that has done is that it has also blinded the hearts of men and um, so that we find it very difficult to shift <clears throat> from where we had been into where God is moving us or where he moved us into. So we keep clinging to the light to an extent of um, that, that, that was shared with us in the time that our fathers had the light that they had. But we thank God that God has given us the privilege to break into depths in things so that we will build on that which are the foundations that our fathers laid. And you know, um, Apostle Babs was sending me some pictures yesterday, the foundation that has been that is being laid for the new wine, you know, apostolic center or the glory center. And we're talking, so we now started discussing on how long it took to build or to dig the foundation, how deep the foundation is and all of that. So we're not, so he was saying that he didn't know that foundation takes so much time. I say, yes, foundation and finishing are the two aspects in every building that takes a lot of time. And if you think that the foundation took time, you wait until you get to the finishing. That's another aspect that takes quite a number of time because you must get it right, okay? And if the foundation is not properly laid, there will be no, fin there will be no proper finishing, I can assure you. No matter how you try, you cannot correct the foundation from the finishing. And that is why foundation takes a whole lot of time. Then finishing also takes a whole lot of time because that is the perfection of all things. That is why you see that those who began before us, like Hebrews chapter 11, the very last verse tells us that they would not, these ones, even though they saw the promise, but they did not get into the promise. Why? Because their perfection will not be complete without us who are the finishers or the perfectors and the perfection is the perfectioners of that which they began. So based on that, you really will not want to blame our fathers for the light that they gave us. Like I said, that light is what brought us where we are. So we must always learn to appreciate them. And I was sharing with somebody who was talking, okay, I was talking with a young lady and we're talking about persecutions. And not just has some other person also sent me some things that, you know, the, the challenges she was going through and all of that. And I said, you should be very thankful for those challenges. I said, because those challenges, those people who you think are terms in your flesh, those people who you think 
are accusing you carrying stories like you like like we will say you know bearing even sometimes even false witnesses intentionally against us they are actually the vessels that the lord has ordained to help us enter into the fullness of the glory that he has already prepared for us which this immortality is a major and integral part of I'm taking my time to lay this foundation this morning so that we'll understand the, the power and you know to the, to, to the extent to which God has already opened our eyes to see things and to define things, but because of maybe our religious mindset and the things we've heard over time, we 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 allowed, yeah. That's I choose to I'm choosing that word intentionally. We allowed. Um, a mind play or the enemy to do carry out a mind play against us in our hearts so that we did not fully understand the implications of staying in a particular place going around a particular mountain even though the glory has moved on you know i always like telling people when i share this kind of thing that imagine the children of israel when they were leaving egypt and they were being guided by the cloud the the, the cloud of glory by day and the pillar of fire by night and the bible records that whenever the cloud of glory or the pillar of cloud rested they also settled there as long as the cloud of glory and the pillar of fire remain they remain there but as soon as the pillar moved and the glory moved anybody that remains in that place where the pillar was and the glory was they are there at their own risk you see there are certain places you will get into even in hotels and um, eateries you will see a sign car vehicles parked at owner's risk that's exactly what happens when the cloud of glory moves and the pillar of cloud shifts and you remain in that place, you are there at your own risk. And anything can happen. And guess what? A whole lot of us have actually been in a place in this journey at our own risk. I'm trusting God that after tonight, after this morning, that our eyes will be open and that we'll be willing to leave where we had been into the places where God is calling us to occupy in himself. He has already provided a place for us, for he said, where I am, there you will be also, which means our place of occupation is in himself. And it is in him that we begin to take territories and we occupy lands and we occupy places that he has freely and fully ordained for us to occupy. It is on that note that I welcome everybody to this morning's um, teaching, call it exposition, call it teaching. I was hoping, <clears throat> I actually desired that we'll have um, a kind of, um, a, you know, a declaration from the place of ascension today, but the Lord wants us to get into this. Then at the end of this series, I believe strongly that would have broken into some things where we'll be interact, we'll, we'll have some deep spiritual interactions with ourselves and as many as you know um, we want to carry along. Again, I say welcome and God bless you. Um, all right. So please, I want to encourage us to please share, invite your friends on Facebook, invite your friends on all the platforms. We are live on all platforms. So um, just take time out to just share um, those things amongst your friends, put it on your status so that we'll have more people join. See, my desire really is to get as many people as possible into this light, into this truth. That's my earnest desire. You know, when, as I interact with people, when I was coming from the airport yesterday and the person that, you know, um, the, the, the cab, the cab I got into, there was somebody else that was with me in the cab, and we, we just got talking. And every time I hear people talk the way they talk, 
it stirs up a deep heart cry in my heart. You know, I, I just, you know, interacting with um, our dear sister, you know, when she began to tell me her background, her growing up, you know, from the Muslim background, the, the kind of life they lived and all of that, you know, what that did to me was it opened me up again. There was this deep yearning to just reach out to these folks instead of seeing them as our enemies. To, you see, they, these guys are, just don't know better. If they knew better, listen, for those of us who have heard our sister Nima speak and all that, you will see that if this guy should come out of, if they should just see the light because of the foundation they were given. I don't know how many of us, our children at nine years old can actually memorize the, the scriptures, the, to, the Torah, that is Genesis to Genesis to Numbers or Deuteronomy. Let me see, Genesis, um, Exodus, Leviticus, uh, Numbers and Deuteronomy. I don't know how many of us have children who at nine years old could memorize all of that. But these people that we are saying that they want to Islamize Nigeria, look at the way they train their children. They memorize the Quran. They memorize it even before they started reading. Before they could know how to read and write, they already memorized the Quran even from the age of five. She was telling me that she could actually memorize, she could actually, she had memorized the Quran even before they started reading. So sometimes they would just be putting their hands. It was as they began to grow, they started, they, that's when they began to understand even the Arabic things that they were that were written in the Quran. But you see, we are talking about the word of God. What believers have come to, as, to take is we are satisfied with the declaration from a few people who even gave a little time to studying or to, yeah, to studying the word and they got into an aspect, got out one or two revelations and began to run with it and they developed it and they keep recycling it. And every, every prayer meeting is praying another person's prayer points and we keep recycling the whole thing. And we just join ourselves in that. How do you expect the power, the life of God to break out in your environment, in a nation, or in places where you are supposed to be shining forth as a light, shining for the king, the very glory and the power of God. It's simply not, you know, it just does not work that way. You cannot give what you have not received. What you have not eaten, what you have not digested, you can't give it, even if you are hearing from other people, so long as you have not digested it, it's still of no effect in your life. Do you know that as I began to study this immortality thing that we're talking about, I just realized that it's actually a taboo for any believer to die. But do we even believe that? How can you believe it and you are praying against death? How can you believe it and you are afraid of death? When you are supposed to have, 
Oh God, okay. We'll understand it as we go in. All right, let's look at, please, um, if you have the mirror Bible, you will help us open to the book of John chapter six. Um, then since we are online, we are going to do a lot of interactions. And Rhoda, if you can share it, if you have it on your phone and you can share it, I'll appreciate that. I don't have it on this laptop, I would have shared it. John chapter six, um, you also hold on. Yeah, we can actually read from, just a moment, please. All right. All right, let's read from verse um, 34. Let's read from verse 34 to the very end. We are doing pure Bible study today. So that you don't think that when we talk immortality that we are just speaking from a place of, uh, we're talking from abstract. Interestingly, um, a sister, who is running a Bible study with the family sent a, one of the questions I was asked. And uh, you know, that's it's like this immortality thing. Um, the God seemed to just send confirmations to show us that yes, this is what we should be doing at this time. You know, like like I like I shared with us last week, when the Lord gave me immortality, and I was just I had something else in mind, but when he said immortality, by the time I got into my kitchen. And I met my daughter there. She began to talk. I even thought that she had a dream. She was telling me on Sunday that it was actually last year that she had that dream. But that's the first time she was sharing with me. That was, For me, that was just a confirmation that the Lord needed us, wanted us to run this series on immortality. You know, because I've been telling people that I won't die. <laughs> and that if I must even depart, I, I decide, I choose the path through the pathway through which I would take. Grave is not definitely part of it. The grave is not, is not part of it at all. Because in Christ, I defeated grave. I defeated death. I made a triumph over them. And I now have the key of death and hell. So in Christ, I defeated hell. And we're going to see it right now. So if you are reading, share, share. Tell us the translation you are reading from. The mirror will take mirror last. So if you are reading, please just tell us the translation you are reading from and you read. Oh, mirror last. Okay, sorry. I'll wait. I have mirror. Okay. Good morning. All right. So um, any other person, maybe TPT or any other translation for that matter from verse 34. Okay, let me take. Um, so I sent you a message. What's the message? Let me see her message. Okay, she said, whoever wants to read can please indicate by raising up of the hand so that you can be asked to unmute. Okay, no problem, I'll read from here. So I'm just going to read the TPT translation. Uh, TPT John.
John chapter six. And I'm going to read from 34. All right. Okay, let me read, take it, let me back up a little. The truth is, Jesus said, Moses didn't give you the bread of heaven. Okay, let's back up more. <laughs> uh, they replied, show us a miracle so we can see it, and then we will believe in you. Moses took care of our ancestors who were fed by the miracle of manna every day in the desert, just like the scripture says, he fed them with bread from heaven. <laughs> what sign will you perform for us? The truth is, Jesus said, Moses didn't give you the bread, the bread of heaven. It is my father who offers, who offers bread that comes as a dramatic sign from heaven. The bread of God is the one who came out of heaven to give his life to feed the world. Then please, sir, give us this bread every day, they replied. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Come every day to me and you will never be hungry. Believe in me and you will never be thirsty. Yet, I've told you that even though you've seen me, you still didn't believe, you still don't believe in me. But everyone my father has given to me, they will come. And all who come to me I will embrace and will never turn them away. And I have come out of heaven, not for my own desire, not for my own desire, but for the satisfaction of my father who sent me. My father who sent me has determined that I will not lose even one of those he has given to me and I will raise them up the last day. Now, if you have a Bible, I want you to under, underline this particular verse, that's verse 39. Say, my father who sent me has determined that I will not lose even one of those he has given me, and I will raise them up in the last day. And if you have a physical Bible, you can just underline, I will raise them up in the last day. For the longing of my father is that everyone who embraces the son and believes in him will experience eternal life. I want, you to, I want you to underline experience eternal life. And I will raise them up in the last day. Again, underline the last day. Anywhere you see, I will raise them up the last day. Just keep underlining that, okay? Because so that's going to be, we are going to see something right now. When the Jews who were hostile to Jesus heard him say, I am the bread that came down from heaven, they immediately began to complain. How can he say, <laughs> how can he say these things? about himself. We know him. Yeah, that is the religious mindset. We know him. We know his parents. How dare he say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus responded, stop your grumbling. The only way people come to me is by the Father who sent me. He pulls on their hearts to embrace me. And those who are drawn to me, I will certainly raise them up in the last day. <laughs> oh my goodness. Jesus continued, it has been written by the prophets. They will all be taught by God himself. If you are really listening to the Father and learning directly from him, you will come to me, for I am the only one who has come from the Father's side, and I have seen the Father. I speak to you, living truth. Unite your heart to me and believe, and you will experience eternal life. Underline experience eternal life. I am the true bread of life. Underline I am the true bread of life. Your ancestors ate manna in the desert and died. Note that they ate manna. Manna came from heaven. Manna came from God, but they died. But standing here before you is the true bread that comes out of heaven. And when you eat this bread, you will never die. Please underline that. In fact, emphasize that particular scripture, verse 50. And I'm glad it's verse number 50 
<laughs> and there's a mystery in that. He said, and when you eat this bread, you will never, never, I don't know how you are going to emphasize that never, you will never die. I alone am this living bread that has come to you from heaven. Eat this bread and you will live forever. On the line, you will live forever when you eat this bread. The living bread I give you is my body, which I will offer as a sacrifice so that all may live. I will offer it up as a sacrifice so that all may live. Amen. These words of Jesus sparked an angry outburst among the Jews. They protested, saying, does this man, <laughs> does this man <laughs> expect us to eat his body? Jesus replied to them, listen to this eternal truth, unless you eat the body of the son. <coughs> Excuse me. Except you eat the body of the son of man and drink his blood, you will not have eternal life. Eternal life comes... <laughs> Excuse me. Ah. <laughs> Sorry, there's some time here. So, uh, glory to God. Okay, eternal life comes to the one who eats my body and drinks my body, my my blood, and I will raise him up in the last day. Please underline it. For my body is real food for your spirit, and my blood is real drink. The one who eats my body and drinks my blood lives in me and I in him. This is the secret of longevity. This is the secret of immortality. Or the path, this is the door of immortality. This is the portal of immortality. This is also the equation of immortality. Drink the eat the flesh of the sun and drink the blood of the sun. That, that gives you access into eternal, into eternal life. Um, drinks my blood lives in me and I live in him. When you eat the flesh of the son and you drink his blood, he says, you live in him and he lives in you. The father of life sent me and he is my life. In the same way, the one who feeds upon me, I will become his life. I am not like the bread your ancestors ate and later died. I am the living bread that comes from heaven. Eat this bread and you will live forever. On the line, you will live forever. Jesus preached this sermon in the synagogue in Capernaum. Amen. All right. So, can somebody help me read? Okay, Funola, you can now read the mirror translation from verse 30. Just take. Okay, you can take it from verse 32 to 58. All right, sir. They said, oh Lord, this is the bread we crave. Give us this bread. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. He that comes face to face with me shall never hunger. And he who finds his faith, he who finds his faith resting in me shall never thirst. Verse 36. But even though you have, even though you have seen me, you are not persuaded. Everyone, verse 37, everyone whom the Father has given me will come face to face with me. And here, mirrored in me, they will see that I am not the judge. I will not cast anyone out. 38, for I have stepped down out of heaven, not to make a name for myself. I did not come to become a mere historic hero. I have come to communicate the resolve of him who sent me. My sender's desire is for you to rescue every, for me to rescue every single individual. This is his gift to me that I will, that I will lose no detail, that I will lose no detail of mankind's original identity mirrored in me. My, my rescuing mission will conclude in their, their joint resurrection. This is the completeness of time. Okay, down. Verse 40. And this is the desire of my father that everyone who sees the son through his eyes sees the son through his eyes and finds the conclusion of their persuasion in him will resonate the life of the ages, and I will raise him up in the final day. 
the religious Jews, the religious Jews were no longer paying any attention. They were shocked and offended at the idea that he said he was the bread of heaven, head bread from heaven. They, they reasoned that since they knew this, since they knew his parents to be Joseph and Mary, he had no valid claim to any heavenly source. Verse 43. Then Jesus addressed them, saying, Your murmuring and reasoning among yourselves will continue to veil me from you. 44. No one is forcing you to believe. It is the Father who sent me who draws you to see me face to face. Only once you've seen. Only once you've seen how in the mystery of God, I mirror you. Okay, sorry. Let me take that again. No one is forcing you to believe. It is the father who sent me who draws you to see me face to face. Only once you've seen, only once you've seen how in the mystery of God, I mirror you. Will you understand that I will be, I will co-raise you in the grand finale of my mission. 45. This is written, it is written in the prophets that every single individual will be taught of God. To hear the Father's instruction concerning me is to come face to face with me. No one, no one has seen the Father except the one who proceeds from him. He is most intimately acquainted with the Father. Of course, absolutely certainly, of course, absolutely certainly do I declare to you that anyone whose faith ultimately rests rest in who I really am is what is this one in this one the life of the ages in this one the life of ages resonates I am the bread of life your fathers your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness and died there in the wilderness this this what you have what you have here is me standing face to face with you is the very substance of your life the bread descending out of the heavenly sphere for everyone to eat their full and not die. I am the living bread. I stepped out of the heavenly realm into, I stepped out of the heavenly realm into this earth suit in the incarnation so that everyone may feast on the idea of their true incarnate identity mirrored in me and discover the life of the ages incarnate in them. The bread that I will give, the bread that I will give is my own flesh. It is, it is, it will translate into life for the entire cosmos. Verse 52, this brought about a war. This was about a war of words among the Jews. How can this man give us human flesh to eat? 53, huh? amen, amen, I say unto you, amen, amen, I say unto you that you have, you have no real life in yourselves until you consume the flesh of the son of man and drink his blood. Your every meal, your every meal is a celebration of the incarnation to eat my flesh and drink my blood is to digest me like your body is designed to digest food and it becomes flesh. To echo, this echoes the life of the ages and communicates the fact that you were, you are co-reason with me in the final conclusion of this work of redemption. My flesh is food in its truest form. My blood is drink in its truest form. The eating of my flesh and drinking of my blood is the celebration of my sinless union. You in me and I in you, because you won't find you won't find you until you find me. As a living, as a living father has sent me and also sustains me, so will I sustain the one eating me. I live through my father, just like. Just like my daily food sustains me, so his life permanently resides in me. Now you may also continually and habitually feast on me and live through me. This is the bread. This is the bread that stepped down out of the heavenly sphere. There is no comparison with the manna. There's no comparison with the manna your fathers received from heaven. Yeah, it's long. Oh, wow. Well. Sorry, I'm looking for the next verse. <laughs> okay. To the end, right? Should I continue? No, you stop at 58. Thank you. All right, sir. <laughs> wow. Thank you. The Lord bless this reading into our hearts, and I pray that this reading will become flesh, spirit, and life in us to, so that there will be an activation of that which the Lord has predetermined even before time began. You know, that, that there will be a transfer 
and a release of that particular life, that, um, that desire of God for the reincarnation of his being as manifested in us and mirrored in our lives in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. All right, so let's look at, Jesus was talking to these people, you know, let's look at the background. He had, he had fed 5,000 men, excluding women and children. So it is estimated that there were over um, 25,000 up to 30,000 that he fed. And they were all full. And these were just with um, five loaves of bread and two fishes. And they, they even gathered more than enough, gathered baskets of remnants. Now, so when, of course, he's, he has sent the disciples ahead of him while he went into a mountain to pray. Then later, so they were searching for him because they knew that he did not go with disciples. But later they now found him <laughs> with the disciples and they began to wonder how did he get there? But Jesus did not even answer them. Or instead, they now began to make a request. So Jesus told them, say, you are not looking for me because of me, but you're actually looking for me because you ate bread. And they now began to talk about signs and one that I should show them a sign. Then they now entered into, to confirm what Jesus said, that they were actually looking for bread. And I'm going to mirror that in the present system that we call church or all I say, everyone who has a religious mindset, you will see that the reason they are, they are going, the reason they are involved at all with things that have to do with anything called spiritual is because of what they can eat, what they can get. That is why you see that the testimonies that people give these days, testimonies of how the prayer meetings, if I were to teach right now, if I, if I were to put up a program that would teach you 10 keys on how to make wealth overnight. If I were to teach on 24-hour miracles, you will see that we'll have to pay to increase the number of our meeting in all of the platforms. You will see that Facebook will be buzzing with quite a number of people coming. Why? Especially if I were to open up or if we were to be posting the kind of testimonies that people are sharing, even through these teachings, if we are to be posting the kind of testimony that people are sharing, the kind of encounters that people are hearing, are, are having, you can be sure that we'll not be having the kind of numbers that we are having right now. But you see, because this is, this particular one that they need, the enemy kind of shield them away from it. Hearts are not open. To receive it why because it's not telling them how they can meet or receive their the answers to their immediate need nobody is th thinking eternity look i can pray and the lord will open the heavens and rain down blessings and all of that and you receive those blessings and you will still not even the enemy will still be playing you about like like you know it's like your heart your home would be like a marketplace, like a shopping mall that anybody can come in and out of. And that's how most of us, our lives are. People out there, look at this, look at church folks. They are the ones with the deepest of challenges in life. And you just wonder which God exactly do you call to when you pray these prayers? You know, people tell me that I have waited, I have fasted, I have done this. I, I went on 40 days, I went to this mountain, I went to that mountain. And here they are still having the struggles. And I ask them a simple question. How is your study life? Zero. Meanwhile, that is, where, that is what you need to overcome all of those mountains you've been going. You, you don't know that you yourself, you are a mountain. People should come to you. So Jesus was telling them, the same thing, the same challenge that we have in this present time, this, it was even in the times, in the days of Jesus, when he walked this earth. So he said to them, the reason you are coming to me is not because you want to see me or you want to know me or you want to have an encounter with me. The reason you are coming is because of the bread I gave you to eat. And they now began to confirm it. One would have thought that they would have said, eh, 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 yes. But look at what they said. They said, 
show us a sign so that we'll believe you just the way moses gave <laughs> gave the children our ancestors manna bread from heaven you know in the in the wilderness which means they did not even they didn't even know they didn't even read their torah to understand that it was not moses that gave them that food because remember that when they began to complain the lord is the lord was god was the one that called moses and said i will feed them and by the time they woke up in the morning they saw they saw they saw manna everywhere after god had instructed moses on how they would how they are to feed on that particular manner and the lord was giving them a sign that you are to eat you are to gather just for one day and that tells you something that what even the revelation we are feeding we are feeding on right now if you say that i have this on there this is all i need for the next one year you will die by the wayside that will that is not that is not eternal life. It, you have to eat of this bread on a daily basis. You have to partake on this flesh and this, this, this blood on a daily basis. It's a fellowship of life. That is what puts life into, that's what injects life. That's what injects eternity. That's what injects power. That's what injects immortality into your being. But when you just think that it is about, you know, um, one vigil, one prayer meeting, after another prayer meeting, after another prayer meeting, <laughs> then you you join platforms for declarations and all that. You read, um, you know, the, the, the various various uh, what they call it um, uh, uh, devotionals and all that but you don't have a personal revelation downloaded from the place of a personal fellowship where you have your own personal study with the with of the world fellowshipping with the lord listen you are not doing yourself any favor you are not doing yourself any favor There are things I will say about the prophetic now because I don't want to be misunderstood. But listen, even the prophetic that just comes to declare, I see you doing this, I see you doing that, I see you doing that, is still not the place that you want to be. Any prophetic that will not open a doorway for you to assess the deep things of the kingdom, where you can actually fellowship with the Lord and gain gain as uh, ascension heights into glory range listen i will say after a while separate yourself from that such a prophetic ministry including me if that is what i'm doing for you after a while separate yourself from me and go seek god for yourself because i'm not helping you if every day i come here i declare it's not as if I don't see those things and I declare what, I, what I'm seeing and you keep, there was a time when we were doing prophetic, when we were doing all those, of, all those ascensions, there was a time that people will wait till the end when they know that declarations would have started, that's when they will join. They are not doing themselves any favor. Because to sustain, to engage, and to break into those things that were declared, you need to understand the teaching. Something led to those declarations. They did not just happen. And for those, there, there's a sister that keeps having encounters. Why? She goes back to listen to the teachings and she's asking questions. Yesterday night, I was asking questions, I was answering questions that she was asking. And guess what? Like I've told us before, we took a particular topic, the question mark, and we told us that the quest questions are keys to unlocking portals. Permit me if it looks like I'm being hard this morning, but you see, if we are going to break into this life, into this immortal thing, if we are going to break into this eternity, we need to be hard on ourselves. 
Just like you see, you see <laughs> Jesus, after he shared this truth, by the time you read further, you see that after that, many of the disciples, they departed. Jesus had to turn to the 12. What about you? Are you living also? Because when they were complaining, you would have thought that Jesus would suffer that. No, he pressed on. He just because it was time for them to understand what he came to do. And this morning, I just want to use this platform to share, to open our eyes to something. And I pray that the things we'll share this morning will set us free from certain bondages that we've been held down by through the ages. And after now, I'll encourage us, let's share this teaching, share the YouTube, share the Facebook. Let's share it. Let's spread it to people. Make notes on them, introducing the teaching to them, why they have to listen to it. Because what I'm sharing this morning is, is not just for us. It is for as many as we can reach out to. This is an outreach to the church, an outreach to believers, and a call to awaken from the slumber, the state of slumber that we had been. Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Now let's take a look at it. So Jesus was just talking to them and was saying, look, your fathers, that which you say Moses gave them, it wasn't Moses that gave them, it was, it was my father, it was God that actually released those things from heaven. And it was a foreshadow of my coming. And because your fathers did not understand it, they ate that manner, even as our fathers had eaten this word, they ate the word, but they also died. Even though the difference between um, the Jews, the, the, the ancestors of the Jews, and our fathers who slept in the, the, let me use the word dead and I'll correct it, who died in the Lord, the difference is that according to um, 2 Corinthians chapter 15, it says that they slept which means as a believer, you don't die, you sleep. And I'll tell you why this morning. The reason believers don't die, but they sleep, and that is because we also, to an extent, we're ignorant and we accepted an aspect of, an aspect of this truth, but we'll not accept the totality, the completion of what Jesus came to show us what he came to mirror in himself through us to the world, because we did not quite get the, the full picture is why we see that people, even after eating and are eating the partaking of the world, they still died. Why? Because they, somewhere in their hearts, they believe that sometime, someday, everyone born, <laughs> everyone born of a woman that is in the flesh will die. But you see, this is not a complete and total truth. It is only truth so long as you believe it. And faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God, just as fear comes by hearing and hearing the words of the enemy. Because everything the enemy do does is rooted and shrouded in fear. So, one of the things that he projects in the hearts of every man is this instrument, this tool of fear. I'm just going to remove this background so that. Uh... No, don't worry, don't stop the recording. Yeah, because I just saw that part of me were disappearing and it's not too good on YouTube. All right, now, so like I was saying, what we don't know is that there is a projection of ignorance that keeps playing in the heart of man. And that projection is what the enemy capitalizes on. 
It is called ignorance of who we are, our true identity as mirrored in Christ. So at the end of the day, the issue of identity, if not properly dealt with, the enemy will continue to capitalize on that to rob us of the eternal life that Jesus, that God wrought in his son when he laid his life down for us. I'm not going to rush this teaching. So I'm going to take my time to deal with it. Thank God we are all in the comfort of our homes and of course offices. If we don't finish it today, we'll continue next week. But you see, I intend, my greatest desire is that we all come into the fullness of this. So that, <laughs> yeah, let me say this. So that even if we were to sleep, the sleep of eternity, in our sleep, in that sleep, we can actually say, no, my body will not be buried. Because my body had been buried once, it can't be buried the second time. And that's what we want to look at today. We want to understand the resurrection from God's point of view and perspective as against the religious mindset that we have been taught through the years. I pray that the spirit of religion will be broken and destroyed completely from our hearts in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen and amen. All right, let's move on. Um, you remember somewhere in Hosea, I think chapter six, we had began to talk. He said, let, come, let us return unto God and he will heal us. He said, after two days, he will revive us. Then on the third day, he will raise us up. Resurrection. On the third day, he will raise us up. People have not really understood the mystery that Hosea was prophet, Hosea prophesied in that place. He was actually talking about the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now, the death of Jesus and the resurrection of that of Jesus, but now in the Christ. Jesus, you know, there's a reason I said underline everywhere you see, I will raise him up on the last day, underline it, underline it, underline it. There's a reason I said that, because that is what has caused confusion in the heart of men, even preachers, even the greatest preacher. The greatest men of God have actually made that error. That is why you will see that they have taught us that do everything you need to do now and walk right so that when you die, you will make heaven. Oh my God. That is one of the greatest error that the enemy have used to hold men bound so that we now got to the place where we accepted death as part of the curriculum. No. Death wasn't part of the curriculum. Remember that death was as a result of sin. And if you have been restored in Christ, why would, you, why would death still be part of the curriculum? Death was eliminated. And guess what? To even show you, God, Jesus, when he went into the lower part with you and I, let me correct it. When we went into the lower part of the earth, <laughs> when we went into the lower part of the earth in Christ, in Jesus, we made a public show of Satan and his cohorts, and we took the key of death and hell from him so that the keys of death and hell are now in our hands. Why? Why am I saying so? Why am I using the word we? Because I am a joint hair. I am a, I am co-seated with him upon the throne. He is the head. I am part of the body. So if I'm part of the body, everything he is, I am. 
I am mirrored in him. He is mirrored in him, in me. I in him, he in me. We are one in the Father. So because of that, everything he did, I did. Everything he is, I am. Where he is, I am there. What he does, I do. Am I making sense? Please, I need response now. Am I making sense? Yes, you are. Thank you. It's important that we come to know this truth. It's, in, it's important that we enter into this light. Because this is what will eliminate the fear. That's why I said he has not given us the spirit of fear, but the spirit of love, boldness, and a sound mind. A sound mind is that mind that sees everything that God has done. So, And you, are, you also see yourself in the position and you see yourself in the empowerment that you are able to dislodge powers that come to distort that which the Lord has already done. Hmm. Glory to God. I'm just getting excited in my spirit right now. There is something that Jesus came to do when he came. I will keep saying this until it sinks into the heart of somebody. When Jesus came, Jesus came to mirror your life. Jesus came to show you how you are supposed to live. The life that you were ordained to live. That was distorted in, in the first Adam but now has been in, your, in the restoration and in the resurrection had been fully restored so that Jesus is Lord, so that you can now enter fully into that which you were ordained to fulfill. I am praying this morning that somebody here that your eyes will be open, your heart will be enlightened, that you will see the light of God and the life of God, that he has so shown upon you, and that you will see the pathway of life that he has created and he has opened up, and the secret stairways that leads to the very heart of the Father. I'm praying that there will be a breaking into this knowledge that will not only set you free, but will set generations and whole communities free in the name of Jesus. Because, you see, when we talk, you see, talk about anything at all, when you understand the life that God brought you into, there are quite a number of things that you have struggled with in life the only regret you will have is that you did not enter into it early enough. Somebody is hearing me, just shout hallelujah. Amen. So, you see, Jesus, when he came, he came and he said, look, I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. That's what he said in John chapter 10, right? Now, when he came, and he began to walk this earth. Everything, if you could just pray that God opened my eyes to see how Jesus walked the earth, you will see that everything Jesus did is actually, he was unveiling, he was unpacking the fullness of the life that you were designed. He was bringing you into your original design. So when he took on the nature of man, please note this, when he took on the nature of man in his fallen, in his fallen state, he took on that nature to live the life, woo, to live the life that you and I were designed to live. So that even if the enemy throw things at us, we are exposed to all manner of temptations, trials, vices, we simply, he showed us our design that even though we're supposed to search this, we were not designed to fall into them because that is not our originality. Our originality is such that 
it rebuffs. Such things does not stick to us. That is why he said, though you are in the world, you are not of the world. That was what Jesus, that is the life that he lived. That is the life that he reflected. That is the life that he mirrored. He was in the world, but he did not act as somebody who was of the world. So that was why he could say boldly that I came from heaven. I was by the side of the father and from his side, I proceeded. And even me, I was in the thoughts of God. I was by his side. I was with him when he created all of the things. I was a co-creator and I'm still a co-creator with him. And that is why I proceeded from him. Jesus came and he mirrored that life in this world so that I will now know. He just came to show me and he said, look, this is who you are. This is how you are supposed to walk. This is the power, the grace, the authority you have over all things. It is in this realm that you are able to rule and reign in dominion over everything, over all creation as it was even before the fall. Hmm. Glory to God. <laughs> so when he, was, when he kept on repeating, he said, I am that bread that came from heaven. I am the bread of life. The bread that your ancestors ate in the wilderness, the bread that our fathers ate and they died is because they did not have a true understanding, a true revelation. There's a place in the epistles where Paul began to write, he said the bread that they ate in the wilderness, he said they, they ate it. They ate that manner, but it did not mix the word they had, did not mix with faith in their hearts, which means they were just eating for to feed their belly. Just as we see in the present system, all we are doing, even preachers, they are feeding people with ordinary bread, something that they would eat, house, visa, football, you know, all of those things. Bank account, 24-hour miracles that they cannot sustain because they don't have the wherewithal, they don't have the knowledge. That is why, have you noticed that when you look at the parable of the sower, Kabalush, Akitata, when you look at the parable of the sower, he said, listen to this very well, he said, the seed that fell by the side, he said, when those seed fell, he said, the birds of the, the fowls of the air came and ate them up. Why? Because it, they, they did not have any roots. Which means the enemy has the power to take even the word that you have. That is why you see that you go when you keep when you keep basking when you when you are satisfied with all of these half baked revelations, all of these prayer points that they keep giving you, all of these things that you keep saying. How do I don't know how people respond to those things? You, re, you say I receive and you put it to your heart, to your heart and you keep saying Amen, 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 Amen. Have you noticed that as soon as those programs finishes, the following day, you are looking for another one again? You are never satisfied. But there is a bread that you will eat. The bread of life. When you eat that bread, you are satisfied. That when you drink of that water, when you drink from that well, he say you never thirst again. What does it mean you never thirst again? Does it mean you won't go for more? That's because you have now connected to the very source of life. And no man can bamboozle you. You become, you find that prayer point begin to flow from your innermost being. It flows like wells of water, such that when you pray, people will say, what kind of person are you? Mommy Bruma is here. I think she should be online. I don't know what she is. But when we were in, 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 in when we were in a, in, in Zanzibar, her son's wedding. I just made how many how many minutes of decree, just talking with the, with with with, the, with with our children. By the time we just finished making that decree, people were coming to me to say, hmm, "Man, that your prayer was different." Do you know why? I'm not praying another person's prayer. I don't want to pray a prayer that another pastor had prayed. Copy and paste. 
I want a prayer that is from the source. I want to be able to see the scroll of the destiny of the one I'm praying for and release something from that end and call it forth because that is the portal that I am. I'm a gateway between the heavenly and the earth realm. What it means that whatsoever I have seen in the heavens, that is what I begin to allow on the earth. I'm not teaching gates and portals today, but I just wanted to bring that out that listen, when we enter into this fellowship, you will not be praying other people's prayer. You'll be praying a prayer based on the scrolls that are opening to you. And the only way you can get into this is when you come into the place and you make up your mind that you want to walk the path of immortality. Somebody hearing me this morning or afternoon, we are already in the afternoon. Glory to God. The Lord told me that he will favor us with time today. And I know that he will favor us with time. We'll finish it. You'll be amazed that we'll finish this. Amen. So he began to tell them, he said, listen, he said, the, the, what I have come to do or what I came to do, he said, when I finish the work, let's look at it. <laughs> wow. Let's look at verse 47. Okay, let's back up a little. I want to read something out. Um. I'll take it from verse 35. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. He that comes face to face with me shall never hunger, shall never hunger. And he who finds his faith resting in me shall never thirst. Hmm. He who comes to me face to face shall never hunger. Do you know why? You are connected to the very source of divine supplies. It is your ability to get, when you stay face to face with the Lord, that is when you see that the physical food means little to you. You don't even know when you have eaten or when you have not eaten. Why? Because you are feeding on a more important um, food. Verse 36 says, but even though you have seen me, you have not, you are not persuaded. He said, you might be happy with the healing and be entertained with the signs, but still you fail to understand who I am. I am not here to impress you with me. I am here to persuade you about you. Now you see what I'm you see what I said earlier. He said, I'm not here to impress you with me. In other words, Jesus did not come to display himself. Instead, what Jesus actually came to do was to mirror you in himself. In other words, to bring out the real you in himself, to introduce you, to introduce to you who you really are by displaying your person. Oh, wow. Mm. You know, I was sharing with somebody when, when was that now? I'm trying to remember. I was telling the person before I got saved, right? When I'm close to you, you will think you know me. In fact, you will be boasting that no, no, no. Samens, that was my that was my nickname then. Samens and I, we look once you once you once you've seen me, you've seen Samens. So we, we, we are similar in everything. That was the greatest deceit with which I deceived all my friends. None of them knew me. Now, all my friends I was close to. They all knew me, but they actually only knew themselves. Because when I come to you, I will understudy you. So I will behave like you. You will think you know me. You don't know me. 
the real me was, was locked away in a secret room. So Jesus is saying here, if you think that I came to impress you with myself, you are missing the point. Everything you are impressed by or you are impressed with, everything in me you see that impresses you is actually who you are, that you did not know you are. Does it make sense? Does that make sense? Please, I want to be sure somebody got that. You can unmute your mic to respond, please. I know I need to be sure somebody got what I'm saying. All right, thank you. You see, until we come into the, this reality, into this truth, into this unveiling, we will not begin to appreciate what Jesus came to do. So that, that is why when I hear people say about Jesus, and the reason Jesus did that was because he was God, that's a lie. He came to show you who you are. So everything you saw him did that you are so impressed by and impressed with, that thrills you, that is who you are. The reason it's thrilling you is because you are seeing your true nature. There's somebody here right now that is listening to this teaching, right? You will see that there is a bubbly, there is a joy bubbling inside you because all of a sudden you are connecting with the real life, your real person. You see, most of the teachings we've heard are oppressive because the people that is teaching us is presenting something as if they had entered into something that is impossible for you to come into. So their own is to give you bread. So you keep coming for more. But what we are doing this morning is to open your eyes and to open a gateway for you to enter into the fullness of the life that God has called you into. So that you don't need to keep going to that well to fetch water. So that you will connect with the life source that is embedded in you, that has been awaiting you to tap into through the ages. Somebody shout hallelujah. This teaching today is like a flagship teaching of the kingdom of God. Amen. <laughs> so listen, let's read on. Look at what he said. He said, I'll take that again. Say, I'm not here to impress you with me. I am here to persuade you about you. Your sonship is what I am all about. Your sonship is what I'm all about. In other words, what Jesus came to do was to bring you into your sonship with the Father of light. And the only way that I can persuade you about you is to take you with me into your, ooh, to take you with me into your, your own death. Oh my goodness. Is somebody getting something? I don't know. It's like th th there is an explosion in this place. I just wish I could, I could share this particular Bible on the screen so that we'll read what I'm reading. And I want to encourage us. After now, Rhoda, please post the mirror translation, the app, post it on all the platforms. Let people go and download it. If you have Android, to be able to access it, you have to download um, another app, EPUB, EPUB Reader, so that with that, you can access the, 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 the Mirror Bible in your phone, right? Because honestly, we all need to come into the reality of these things. And don't just read the way they did it is such that, just like the TPT also, um, they, they don't leave the footnote on that. Instead, for every verse, they bring out the they, they bring out the footnote, and it brings you into, it unlocks a door and helps you to get into the depth of what is being said, and 
it, it, it opens your meditations. It, it stirs up questionings. And as you question, you find that the answer is contained in the very, the answer to your question is contained in the very next verse. But because you have questions, it prepares the ground and it opens your heart for, makes your heart a landing pad for the right answers to come in. Amen. This teaching, there's, if I teach this, there are places I will teach this teaching, men will be offended. If I teach this teaching amongst leaders, amongst pastors, they will be offended because they know that this teaching will open the eyes of men and take them out of the bondage that we pastors are placed people. Yeah. I'll just leave it there. Now, I continue. He said, and the only way that I can persuade you about you is to take you with me into your death and darkness and overcome your fear and hell and birth you again into newness of life in my resurrection. Everyone whom the Father has given me will come face to face with me. And here, mirrored in me, they will see that I am not the judge. I will not cast anyone out. The preposition pros is used here again in as in first John, that is where it says. He was seated with, he was with him in the beginning, face to face with the Father. For I have stepped down out of heaven, not to make a name for myself. I did not come to become a mere historic hero. I have come to communicate the result, the result of him who sent me. I'm here to demonstrate to you how, how persuaded my father is about you. The father knew that at some point man will fall. So he already prepared, even before the foundation of the world, he prepared this pathway. Somebody that will come to mirror the real life that we are created to live, to mirror that life to us. My sender's desire is for me to rescue every single individual. This is his gift to me, that I will lose no detail of mankind, mankind's original identity mirrored in me. Oh. See, each time I see this thing, eh, I, I, I bore from deep within me that we are not, we are, we are not, why, are, why didn't we get this from the beginning? That Jesus just came to mirror the life that we, that we are supposed to live. He mirrored it in the, his life on earth, he mirrored it in his death, and he mirrored it in his resurrection. And because we were, we were co-dead with him, and we were co-buried with him. We were also co-resurrected. We were co-crucified with him. We were also co-resurrected with and in him. That is why it is impossible for you to say you will die again. And that's why you see Jesus kept on saying that I will raise him on the last day. What is the last day? The last day, he was actually referring to the last day of his assignment on earth, which was to be concluded. The conclusion of that assignment was his resurrection. That was his conclusion. That was the conclusion of the assignment. And that's why you see that Hosea prophesied it. He said, let us go to him. After two days, he will revive us. Then on the third day, he will resurrect us. He will raise us up. So the power of the third day was what Jesus was referring to. The mystery of the third day was what he was unveiling here when he kept on saying, I will raise them up on everyone who believes in me. I will raise them up on the last day. So he was not talking about the death that you will die. Oh, because you were not even meant to die. After the resurrection, you were not meant to die. And for those out of ignorance who slept because they wanted to sleep, if they knew that it was time for them to go, they could have actually asked the Lord, okay, send the cloud or send the whirlwind or send the chariots of fire or just show me the pathway of life. Have you not heard that we did is the fountain of life. 
For in your light we shall see light. With thee is a fountain of life. What is the fountain of life? The fountain of life is the fountain of life. What it means is that out of him proceeds life. And if you, so long as you are drinking of that fountain, no death, no death can affect your body. That is why you see that as you begin to walk in the full understanding and you begin to grow into the depth of this knowledge, what begins to happen to your even physical body is that you begin to see transformation take place. You begin to see a reversal of aging process. Why? Because you have so eaten of this, eating into this life that the life that you are eating is now becoming just he compared it with food. He said, just like you eat food, when you eat food, the food digests and becomes, becomes one with your flesh. So also when you eat Christ, when you eat Jesus, when you eat the flesh and you drink of his blood. Then after a while, it becomes part of your life. You become part of his life. There is an intertwining that takes place. There's an interlocking of life that cannot be separated. It can't be broken. Is somebody seeing what I'm saying? So you see, Jesus did not just come to thrill you. He said he did not come just to, to, to leave a historic reel behind. No, he came to mirror in himself, the life you were originally designed to live. A life of eternity. So you see how wrong the teaching is that um, So you're muted. The, the Wi-Fi got very hot, so I need to.
Please just a moment, um, Facebook. Just a moment, please. Just a moment, Bear with us, please. Trying to reconnect on Facebook so that we'll carry everybody along. Your telegram is muted. No, telegram is on. I was muted before, but it's, it's on now. Okay, we are back live on Facebook. Sorry about that. So, like I was saying, um, so my sender's desire is for me to rescue every single individual. This is the gift. This is his gift to me that I will lose no detail of mankind's original identity mirrored in me. My rescuing mission will conclude in their joint resurrection. This is the completeness of time. Do you see when time completed? <laughs> when did Jesus resurrect? Oh, their joint resurrection me. Well, okay, let me just read this, listen. This is his gift to me. Who they do care more. The phrase, hai na pan apolesu es auto, meaning that I should lose nothing out of it in the conclusion, fullness of time. Te, te escate hamera. This phrase occurs only in John, John 6, 39, 6, 40, 6, 44, 6, 54. That is resurrect on the last day. Hmm? See John 4, 23. The end of an era has arrived. The future is here. Whatever prophetic values were expressed in external devotional forms and rituals are now eclipsed in true spirit worship from within, face to face with the Father, acknowledging our genesis in him. This is his delight 
The Father's desire is the worshiper more than the worship. And what we see is that, you know, every time we pray, we pray prayer, asking, 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 and we don't listen to what he has to say, not knowing that he also enjoys. Hmm. Okay. Okay, let me just you let me see if I can do this in two minutes. Lord is just asking me. I'm just I just saw something just you know pointed at me right now. What I try to do is to listen to scrolls. I just see I listen to scrolls as they unveil and I speak as I see. And I'm just seeing something right now. As was just pointed at me, was showing me a husband and a wife. And in this case, he was reflecting it as, as Christ and his bride. One of the things that the system that we call church, I prefer using assembly or the Ecclesia of Jesus Christ, one of, it, one, of the, one of the distractions that came in is this, where we just believe that he should, um, he saved me to provide for me, to do things for me. You know, just like a, a wife will say, because I am the husband, uh, I'm the wife now, you are the provider. You do this, you do that, you do this, you do that. Now, even the words, even the words, the, the, the words of affection. Have you noticed that a lot of the times when women begin to expect that it's only the man that should be saying words of perfection to do the Hey, serious. Please, we are waiting to connect to Facebook. not connected. Okay.
taking so much time. Sorry about that. Okay, I'm back. Kai says I've ended again. <laughs> this is serious. Oh, all right. Facebook is taking so much time. So, and we have to just continue. All right. Um, sorry. Let's hope this interruption does not come up again in Jesus' name. Where were we? Okay, yeah, I was saying that when we come into this place of understanding and knowledge that our lives, God is not just interested in all of those prayers that we pray, you know, um, you know, it's like a one-way traffic thing where all we are doing is just we pray, 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 we are not having a discussion or in fellowship and interaction with the father of light. Is it? God is more interested. The father is more interested in your person than in whatever requests, than even the worship. Lord, I exalt you. The exaltation that you're even exalting him. Is it that is not the greatest exaltation you can give to the Lord is yourself. When you give him yourself, you, like I was saying, yes, I remember what I was saying now. See, God also wants that hug. He wants you to hold him. He wants you to.
feel like this comment that Sorry, network issues. Okay, I think we are back live on all all channels, all platforms. All right, so like we're saying, I don't know where, can somebody just, so that I'll pick it up from where, because maybe it cut off or it froze on your end. So you said the Lord also needs to be hugged. Okay. Thank you. Thank, you. Hugged. Thank you. Now, so you see, God needs that our, he wants to be hugged. He wants those pet talks. The I love yous. The, the I care very much about you. All of those things that we tell one another. Ladies, those things that you expect your husbands, wives, those that you expect your husbands, ladies, those that you expect guys to tell you, tell them to God. And wives, practice it with your husband. You know that when you practice with your husband, those talks that you're expecting to hear from them, the way you want them to relate with you, when you practice with your husband those things, you will be amazed when you get into the place of fellowship with the Lord, it becomes a natural. It becomes a natural. You know, I tell, I, I once asked a lady who finds it difficult to tell people, I love you. And I asked her a question. I said, do you ever tell the father, I love you? Guess what? Her answer was, ah, <laughs> he's the father, he's God. How can I be? Telling God I love you. You see, carnal mind. Carnal mind. He is, if the father, if, if God, we say that he is love, God is love. He's an embodiment of love. He is not an embodiment. He is love. Everything love flows from him. And yet, you say that you are one with him and you cannot express his life. Or don't you know that his life is love? Expr yeah, you can Nobody can express the life of God and people don't see love. So when, and you see, when you say because you are angry, with a friend, you are angry with a sister, you are angry with a brother. So because of that, you cannot say you love them. Oh, come on. What it means, that is actually what did him, that in that while we were yet sinners, he, he loved us and he gave himself for us. Being seen as meant that we were, we were alienated from him. We were, en we were like, like enemies of God. But he loved us. You now begin to understand when he says, love them that hate you. Love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Every time you do that, you're actually expressing God. And you are creating that environment of God. Like I said, I needed two minutes to share that, but I think we will. Even wow, this network robbed us of our time. 
Let's see how far we can still go. He said, and this is a desire of my father, that everyone who sees the son through his eyes and finds the conclusion of ace, their persuasion in him will, reson will resonate or echo the life of the ages. And I will raise him up in the final day. Now, let me read that final day. Jesus speaks here of mankind's joint resurrection in his resurrection as the final day. The third day is the final day. When Jesus said, if you destroy this temple, I will build it, build it up in three days. What were their responses? The religious people, they were looking at, ah, do you know how long it took our fathers to build this temple? And you are here boasting that you raise it up. You, you build it up in three days. What was he talking? The Bible said that he was referring to his death and resurrection. He was talking about a temple that is not built by the hands of men, but by God himself. The temple that bears a life of immortality. The temple that bears the signature of God in his fullness so that when he dwells in that place, there is no death that can kill. There is no bomb explosion. There is nothing that can tamper with that life. That is the final day that he was referring to. That is the final day that was prophesied in Hosea that on the third day he will raise us up. This is the resurrection that Jesus was referring to. And anyone who had come into that alignment with that resurrection, you don't need to die again. So what the enemy capitalizes on is our ignorance of this truth embedded, yet very naked and plain in this place. <laughs> So long as the enemy can keep us from entering and acknowledging this truth, he will continue to rob us of the eternal work that Jesus wrought when he was crucified, was buried, and he was resurrected on that third day. So guess what? The third day, your third day or your final day is that day that you come into resonance with this truth that when Jesus resurrected, he also resurrected with you. When he died, he died with you. When he, when he resurrected, he, every suffering he suffered, that his skin was broken, your skin was broken also. That he, a, ton, a, ton of, a, ton, a, a crown of thorn was placed on his head. A crown of thorn was placed on your head also. That he was crucified on the cross. You were crucified on the cross with him. You were there. Everything he went through. He was buried. You were buried. So when he resurrected, you resurrected. The day that you come into resonance, the day that you come into the reality, the day that you come into the light of the fullness of all that he wrought, that day, your resurrection, you have entered into your final day. Your resurrection is complete. You don't need to die anymore. That is why I said, even if you know, when you know this, when you have this knowledge and something happened and they say this man has slept the sleep of death, look, because you are still hovering around, you will get back into your body and you say, hey, body, you are not meant to be buried. So get up because together we'll be in the place where I am. There you will be also because where the head is, where the spirit is, there the body must also be. So we are talking about the full salvation of the body and what will bring you into the full salvation of that which has been wrought in the spirit is your ability to come into the knowledge and into the light of the conclusion of all things which was done in Christ Jesus. Am I making sense? I hope I'm not speaking above the head of anybody. I'm going to stop here for today so that we allow for questions. Next week, we are going to continue. You see that we still have a very long passage to cover. So we'll continue next week so that we'll allow for questions right now. I want to be sure that I'm carrying everybody along even as we journey this pathway. God bless you. So let's just bow down our heads for a moment and just talk to God and let's just pray and ask him for divine direction. Let's thank him 
Let's thank the Lord Jesus for coming to mirror us to us, for coming to show us the depth of who we are, and for coming to reveal, to open an aspect that we never knew. All through from Adam, they never knew this. A few of them got to know it. And Enoch knew it. Elijah knew it. David knew it. A few of them got into this life, but quite a number did not get into it. Moses knew it. And those who knew it, they never died. They never died. You know, there's a mystery we'll share one of these days concerning David and to shock you, you know. It's there in scriptures, right, embedded right there in scriptures. It will shock you. But I'm not mentioning it today. We'll talk about it. So I just want us to just talk to God and say, Lord, I, I <laughs> open my heart. I want to enter into the fullness of everything you came to mirror. The me that you came to introduce, I am persuaded. I open my heart. I am persuaded by this to come into the fullness of who I am to come into my original identity, to come into, to be realigned. Lord, I want to resonate with all that you did to come into your resurrection. I want to resonate with the revelation of the third day. And I come into it even now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. I bless and worship you. I honor you, King of glory. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. So I just want to allow for questions and contributions. And even while the teaching was going on, your eyes were open to see something, your ears were open to hear something. Please, this, we are in a discussion zone now. This is an interactive session. So you just raise your hand and we'll, um, we'll ask you to unmute and you say, you either ask your question or share any experience you may have had. Yeah, the floor is open now. Do we have any? Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. I think somebody is sending a chat. So let's just see. Um, okay, Rhoda, please check for Apostle Daphne's um, chat because I may not be able to assess the chat because of the, the network that threw me out the first time. She says she sent something. So if we can assess that, please, let's get it out. I hope it, is it on WhatsApp? Let me see if it's on WhatsApp. No, not on WhatsApp. Brother, can you help us? He said, I actually posted it, but let me read it out. Okay, you have blessed my heart so much today, program. That I keep hearing, he that has ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the churches. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. All right. Do we have any other? Did any other person send you another thing? Okay, another person sent, okay, I thank God I joined this meeting just on my way to the airport. I have been telling people that I joined a group and the Lord said to me, what are you doing here? You have gone higher than this. And I repented <clears throat> and dropped it, dropped off immediately. Today you have given me the scriptures as backup. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. 
The truth is, anyone who have ears to hear, there are certain groups you will join. The Lord will tell you, this is not the place to be. For the ears to hear and the heart to obey. Those who are close to me, I will tell them, but I will, I will not force them. The only people I can force, I will tell. And of course, I don't even need to force them because once I tell them, they listen. And those are my children. And when I once I tell them, they listen to me. But there are people that you will tell. In fact, I remember somebody had told me one time, say, ah, why am I talking about these people like that? That they too, they are pastors. I say, oh, sorry. So since then, at least anyone who says to me, who calls me, who calls me dad and all of that, I should be able to talk to them and I listen to them. And that is how I know in those, those in whom God has actually connected me with by, this, by his spirit. Because there are things I will see. I may not be able to come out to tell you because I don't want to criticize men of God, right? Because I believe is a light that they have. So the only thing I, my responsibility is I pray for them. And for some of them, the Lord will give me the opening and the grace to write, you know, to write to them, to make them see. Some of them, to the glory of God, they invite me and we have some good talks, right? Um, some, they acknowledge the letter and they will say, well, that they cannot leave what God has called them to do into something else. Fine. But at least I have done my due diligence of actually making them see that the place they are, not because of them, but for the sake of those that they are teaching those things, they are not helping them. They are actually, I think I've shared it here before, somebody whom by his books, I told, I, I can say this because I have told him, by his books, had put more people in bondage than he has set people, that people had been set free, you know, just by reading his books, not to mention listening to his teachings. Now, all of these things are right there. But another thing is that even, even those of us, right, who, even those of us, who are knowledgeable and we sit under such teachings and you hear certain things and maybe you even have an opportunity to even talk to these people to tell them that, ah, this teaching that you are teaching is one kind and you don't do it. <laughs> Be sure that, look, I learned something from Bulia Akoni when he was invited to minister somewhere and the person that preached before him, after sharing certain things, <laughs> he, 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 when they called him up, he said to them, he said to the students, I will not be here and somebody pumps garbage into your system and I let it go. He said, because on that day, the Lord is going to ask me, you were there when somebody did this and you did nothing about it. So what he did was in love, he corrected, he corrected those things, right? But the person that was that taught those things carried his bag and left the place. No problem. But at least the people heard. The people heard and they knew that, okay, this person did this for their own sake. So let's get into this. Um, let's get into this understanding of of the kind of teachings the things we hear that are not look if we listen to what our spirit man is saying you will see that most of the time when we sit under such teachings other such ministrations there's a protest going on inside us there's a protest going on inside us but we just choose to ignore it because it's it it it, it feels good it feels good in our body, in our flesh. We are, we are looking at immediate results. And have you noticed that those immediate results never come anyway? And what 
gives us the feel and the the temporal high is the testimonies that have been shared. But please, one way, I always tell you, I say, judge these testimonies. How does it feed you? Does it have to do with eternity or it has to do with this side of time? That's this side of time. Have you not heard? The preacher says, vanity upon vanity, all is vanity. And he said, this is the whole duty of man. The conclusion of the matter is that this is the whole duty of man, that we seek God, find him, and serve him all the days of our lives. And serving God has nothing to do. If you serve God, all of those things will be added. He said, seek for the kingdom of God and his righteousness. That is what, in fact, that's, that's what he said you should spend your labor doing, that you seek him. Seek his righteousness, seek his kingdom. And all these things that we are, that we are rowing about from one post, pillar to post, from one mountain to another, jumping from one program onto another, from one prayer meeting onto another, from one platform onto another, all these things will be added unto you. Even when you don't ask. Even when you don't ask. Just stay in the place of fellowship. Enjoy him. Let his life, let him mirror his life in your life. And you mirror, you'll be mirrored in him and see what happens. May God grant us wisdom in Jesus' name. So, any other as we come to a close? Okay, I'm seeing some things on the platform. Let me read those. So if this knowledge had been unfolded in Pauline's teachings, why is it taking the body so long to realize this? <laughs> wow. Yeah, the truth is like, thank you for the question. The truth is like um, even Peter was saying that uh, the teachings of Paul are, are hard to, to, to chew. Most people, I think our mindset has a lot to do with our understanding. When we take a position, even take, not even the preachers now, even take, let's take, let's start from our own lives. When we take a position, when we have been chewing on certain things and a new light comes, have you noticed that it takes some time for us to not accept it? Except maybe you have been in a place where you are, you are becoming very dissatisfied and you are beginning to seek for more, then God now opens you up to something new and you find that that thing just resonates with your spirit. That's when you open up to it. Otherwise, if you are the kind of person that is looking for um, um, you know, quick, quick fixes, yeah, that's the word, quick fixes, fast food and all that, you find that you are never, you will, you will, you are never longing to get into what we are what, what these things that we are teaching so even though the epistles are there all of those teachings have been unveiled you see from the point you see with you will read from the place of um from the place of a veiled face paul was saying he said with unveiled faces we come and we behold but see most of us we actually approach scriptures the prophets um the epistle the gospels the epistles we and even the revelation we approach everything from an with an unveiled face so you find at the end of the day we are not seeking jesus we are seeking for things do you see we are not seeking a person we are seeking for things we are seeking for what we can get we use all of those things to justify the things that our own needs we forget that Everything about scripture was to bring us into an alignment with our original and authentic creative position where we are meant to give, where we are ordained to give pleasure to the one who created us. When we understand that, you will see that there will be a shift in our orientation. There will be a shift in our discussions and there will be a shift in our interactions. It will no longer be about me it will now be about him. 
seeking him out to understand what he needs. To, we'll be seeking his need, not our own need. And in seeking his need, our needs are met. And we'll not, those needs, our needs being met, we'll not, we won't even pay attention to them. <laughs> yeah, they, don't, they won't have a hold on us. But when we seek our need, that is when we'll be jubilating, thinking that that's the, that's the highest. And we'll be celebrating men instead of celebrating God. And God have mercy on us. Yeah, thank you for guidance, okay? I've turned off a lot of teachings in recent times that I used to clamor for. I just realized they don't get to me or edify me anymore. Hmm, God bless you. Say, so this is how I know that God is working on me and he's bringing me to the place, to a place he actually wants me to be. Hallelujah. That's, 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 that's testimony. That's testimony. Until we see the eternity in man, we will still be thinking in the flesh. Yes, yes, I agree. God help us. I mean, God bring us into these divine truths that have been unveiled. And may they build us up and feed us all in all in the name of Jesus. God bless you. I love you all. I think on that note, we can end today's uh, broadcast. I hope you are all blessed as I was teaching it. And I pray that even as you've been blessed, carry this, share with people. We, um, we have about three of these streams on YouTube. So please share, share them separately share them please then uh, we have uh, we have the youtube we also have mixer arrow and we have uh telegram once the recording once you receive the recording send to as many people as you can send to ministers let them begin let's begin to encourage our ministers with these words and with these teachings amen so by god's grace we'll continue next week and we'll see how far god will take us God bless you, and God honor you in Jesus' name. All right. Okay, guys on Telegram, permission to sign off. God bless you. Mm -hmm.